All right, let's get into it. This is Jeremy with Easy Logistics. Today I wanted to discuss um, the difference between class and NMFC rated freight pricing and density rated freight pricing and some of the benefits and opportunities um, that density based freight pricing uh, can extend to companies, especially if you have complex products with a variety of products that you're shipping. Uh, traditionally, we've been, I've been doing this for 20 years, and traditionally, most freight is rated based off class and NMFC codes, which um, is the standard, but it's, it's fairly complicated, and there's a little, in my opinion, there's a lot of margin for error as far as interpretation. Um, we definitely see a lot of rebills and adjustments based on freight and classifications uh, and inspections by carriers. So um, I've been hearing that density rated freight shipping pricing was going to be more of the standard like the rest of the world, um, but it hasn't quite happened yet. But fear not, we have a solution for you if you have complicated products and a variety of products and you're having troubles with the traditional class and NMFC code system um, with our, a new system we can offer you. So um, with that said, um, class and NMFC codes are complicated because it's rated from 50 to 100 in a numeric form, but then within that, <clears throat> depending on the product, you have to get into the NMFC code bible and there can be hundreds of different classifications or, or descriptions of each product and then it can be density rated beyond that so it, it just there's so many things even as a freight subject matter expert that can be kind of open to interpretation or it's just so many different variables going into it um, it is loosely based on stowability and and cost of merchandise and things like that but it's just there's so much within it that it's fairly complicated. So these are the benefits and the opportunities I see for a more density rated system like Canada and the rest of the world follows. Um, it's definitely really good for warehouse and fulfillment center operators or 3PLs and distributors that handle a, a, a large variety of products that they're shipping. It's not just the same five SKUs. Uh, just a lot of it's it's complicated when you have a hundred or two hundred different SKUs that might be shipping on pallets when it's not all just pallets in pallets out and we see a lot of that so from that perspective you know just being able to weigh the pallet and take the dimensions of it and get a clear rating on it based on the density um, would make it a whole lot easier especially for mixed pallets uh, number two you know like I've talked with about before, um, figuring out the class and NFC code is, is fairly complicated. Even we grapple with it sometimes. People will send us over these obscure things that they're shipping and there's seemingly 50 ways you could classify it. So it, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's somewhat open to interpretation and it, uh, you know, it's not 100% all the time. Number three, it removes uh, the guesswork from quoting shipments because literally you're just taking the dimensions and the weights of the product and dividing it up to get the uh, pounds per cubic foot of what you're shipping. Um, and most of the modern TMSs that do this, uh, I believe all of them have this functionality now. It's just a matter of whether you have density rated tariffs with the carriers or not and are extending that to your clients. Um, but that takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. You don't have to hand calculate this stuff. Um, it simplifies your BLL creation or bill of lading creation because it's just the dimensions and the weights of the pallet and then you're getting your density. And it, and it also tells the carrier exactly what they're getting. It's, it's, you know, 36 inches wide, it's 40 inches high and it's 40 inches deep and it weighs you know, 400 pounds. They know exactly what they're getting. And then you would put on there, obviously if you had three or four pallets, you would have to weigh and measure each one, and then it would calculate those rates based on that. Uh, number five, better freight rates for better density um, and space utilization in the trailer. So it, it benefits companies who are creating denser packaged products and utilizing the available trailer space better so that you, in turn you carriers can get more freight on there and make more money and hopefully charge us a little bit less uh, yada 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 right uh, 
Number six, it eliminates errors caused by class and NMFC updates. <laughs> we see this all the time. Um, my team disputes and contests a lot of these uh, class and NMFC disputes, and it, it's sometimes it's not pretty. We win most of them, but it's hard. It's tedious work, and it's not fun. Uh, none of us like it. Number seven, uh, no class disputes with carriers upon inspection. Um, that kind of alludes to it, number six. But uh, I could see how maybe there would be weight inspection still and measurement inspection still, but probably way less complicated than the current class and NMFC code system that has so many ways to classify it in different ways than maybe what you said it was. Uh, number eight, rates are consistent and predictable because it's based off dimensions and weights. Um, you know, as long as you're measuring and weighing the pallets, it should be consistent. Number nine, um, it's similar to parcel shipping. So the way that you currently rate and ship parcel, it's, it's very much the same based on density and dimensions and weights. So it, um, you already know how to do it or you know, you're used to the systems that do that. Um, potentially the only possible negatives that I was thinking of would be um, Obviously, you have to have an accurate freight scale, um, and you have to measure and weigh each pallet if it's not a standard uh, pallet configuration where you would just be receiving in pallets and pallets out, or they would be, you would be palletizing them and shipping them the same way that you palletize them. Um, if you have just one SKU products that come in and are palletized and go out the same way, and they're always the same weights and same dimensions, that could be easy, but otherwise you got to weigh it and measure it. So those would be the, the only potential negatives I could think of. Um, as I alluded to earlier, if class M NMFC is a pain in your butt like it is a pain in our butt, we do have a new system that we can show you that is has all density degraded tariffs in it. It's part of our California and New Jersey warehouse groups uh, software system. The rates are really quite good and even if the rates aren't um, in line with what you're currently expecting, uh, as long as we can get a month's worth of average lane data and pricing, we can take it to our carriers and negotiate on your behalf to do customer specific pricing, which is really pretty. We have a lot of flexibility in that um, as far as getting density rated better freight tariffs for you. So, um, things that we grapple with every day. If you're looking for a cleaner, more predictable way to rate your freight based on density, uh, you owe it to yourself to give me a call and uh, have a short meeting with us and send us over some of your lane data. I can be reached at 866-854-5341, extension 3, or jeremy at easylogisticsmanagement.com. Hope you're having a great week, and I hope to hear from you soon.